Have you ever heard the phrase, I love Jesus, but I'm not too excited about his ground crew, referring to the church? Is it even okay to say something like that? Well, today we're going to find out. Join me as we kick off with our brand new series, One Another. So this is a photo of me in my happy place. Yes, you got that one right. It's me and my sister playing some lacquer mud cakes in the backyard. Life couldn't be better. I mean, we just always had a ball of a time and we would play all those made up games like cowboy and Indians and mom and dad and, and house house. And uh, well, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It has been really amazing. And uh, I've really enjoyed that. And you can see my parents saw us enjoying it. So they took this photo and it's a memory captured for us for quite some time. Now, with that being said, little did I know that later that night, everything would change for me. You see, that night, my mom would break the big news. Now, she was sitting ready at the dining room table just after we had a lovely dinner together as a family. And she broke the big news. Guys, you are going to have a little baby brother. Now, you might think that at that moment, I would jump up and leap for joy, another brother, but exactly the opposite happened. You know, I was thinking to myself at that stage, and in that moment, I don't want a brother. And the reason behind my thinking was the fact that I have a sister, I'm the brother, and if I have another brother, I'm not unique anymore. It's no longer I'm the only brother. She's going to be the only sister. I want another sister. Because that makes me unique still and I still have my space and my role to play within our little family. Um, if we're going to play cowboys and Indians, we're going to have two cowboys now. I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be okay. Kid you not, I told my mom, I don't want a brother, I only want a sister. Now I'm sharing this story because many times we find ourselves in the same place in church. So you've decided to join Dr. Deo and says, this is my home, my family, and you've loved it here. And then that guy decides to join, or she decides to come to the church. We don't see eye to eye. I don't like you being here. Have you ever found yourself in that space? Well, I'll be honest, I have. I've been challenged. I've actually been challenged by the words of Jesus as John records it here, and he talks about this in 1 John chapter 4, verses 19 to 21. And he says, guys, we love because Jesus first loved us. So he talks about the origin of why we would love. And that's quite a challenge because Jesus loved us perfectly. And then secondly, in verse 20, he goes on and he says, if you say you love God, but you don't love your brother, you are a liar. Because you cannot love someone that you can't see if you can't even love someone that you can see. And then in verse 21, he ends it off and says, this is God's command to us that we love our brothers like Jesus loved us. So it's quite crystal clear biblically in 1 John chapter 4 that we are called to love our brothers. There is no way around this. So to answer the question, is there something like I love Jesus, but I don't love his church? Well, no, that is foreign to Christianity. That's not the way God set up his brand new family and this new creation work that he's doing on our planet. However, the key to this and the challenge for many of us, and I know where you're going, the next question would be, well, then if that's so, who is my brother? Who do I need to love? Jesus has this beautiful story in Matthew chapter 12. Maybe you've heard of it before. He's sitting inside a big building and he's busy teaching everybody in this building and um, as he would usually do. And then with the crowds and the people listening to Jesus, his family, his mom, Mary and his brothers were waiting outside for him and they were actually wanting to speak to him. They were looking for his attention. So one of the guys comes into this teaching space and they come and tell Jesus, Jesus, your parents are waiting outside for you, your mom and your brothers, and, and they're looking for you. And Jesus then answered in the strangest way. He's like, who is my brother and my mother? And 
then he looks at the crowd and he says, looking at his disciples, here is my mother and my brother. Everyone and anyone that follows me, they are my mother, my brother, and my sister. Jesus in this moment does a very radical thing. He redefines family. You know, when you were born, you were born into a family, physically. And that family sets you up for life, to do life, to grow, to mature, and discover how to do life in this world that you just entered in as a newborn baby. And Jesus is making the statement that when he comes, he's starting a brand new thing. And just like you were physically born, you are now spiritually born. You're part of a new creation, and you're now also part of a new family and that sets you up for life and that's actually what this whole series is about it's about you and me discovering how this family if we love one another sets us up for the new creation life God is giving us just one little thing that I'd like to leave you with today is this God calls us to love one another as brothers I don't know if you've noted but there's quite a difference between brotherly love and friendship love And here it is. You see, you don't get to choose your brothers. God brings them into the family and you get to love them. Your friends, you choose. There are people that's like you, speaks like you, talks like you, people that you want to have close and surrounding you. But God sends you brothers and sisters. You don't get to choose them, but you do get to love them. So this week, Take some time to get to know some of your brothers and sisters that you might have never met within your own church family. If this content was helpful to you in any way, I would love to invite you to hit that subscribe button and make sure that you don't miss out as we're journeying together in changing a city.